Hello, welcome back to the Alliance Tournament. I'm CCP Rise. CCP Dolan is here with me, and we are about to start the third match on day five. Hunter Loaded versus Agony Empire in our loser's bracket. And uh, what do we have? So for Hunter Loaded, we have a very strong core battleship shield team with two Navy Scorpions, and then a really tanky support wing with Harpies and Hawks and Merlins. Uh, for Agony Empire, we have a strong battleship shield uh, armor setup with this Vindicator Navy Mega trying to get in there and brawl. Do really strong hardcore DPS, and uh, they actually have the more DPS support wing as well. Yeah, I think this is going to be another case. Hun did this last week too, where they put their support ring at, uh, wing at zero on the beacon, and then uh, their kind of battleships further in the back. They've done that again, and I think it's going to be interesting to see how Agony deals with that because um, it's going to be difficult for them to get to that core, which is going to be able to do damage just fine from way in the back. Uh, although it looks like there goes the uh, Hun support kind of peeling back towards the rest of their fleet. So Yep, uh, Hun has basically said, you haven't warped at zero. You're not charging immediately at the start of the fight. We have the longer range ships and those Navy Scorpions, probably cruise Navy Scorps. Uh, so we're going to just pull back, make you come at us. You're going to have to charge through us. And all that time, we're going to have free movement to position, to get set up just how we like to receive your charge. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, you're not going to be doing any damage to us with Navy Megas and Vindicators. Uh, and we did find out before the match started this time, Agony has brought their flagship. You can see uh, Eumar Duradain and the Vindicator, that is their flagship. Um, if you don't know about the flagship rule, I'm not going to explain it right now, but basically that's uh, got a lot nicer mods on it, potentially. Well, it's going to look like, it looks like you're going to have some time to I explain guess we it, might. because <laughs> they're, uh, they're sort of just positioning. You can see here really well that screening line of support for Hunt Reloaded. They don't want stuff on top of their Navy Scorpions, and you can see that Agony Empire says, all right, we're not gonna. We're not gonna make a move. We're not gonna fall into your net. Yeah. We're just gonna hold because right now you're not doing enough DPS to uh, to us to make us really worried. About well, the it. other big uh, interesting factor here, and this is really interesting now that I notice it, uh, Hun didn't bring a hundred points. So right now, or wait, Agony didn't bring a hundred points. Yes. So Hun is actually ahead. So Agony has to be the one to make the move here. Hun could just sit and let the timer run out, and they would win. Um, but Agony's taking their time trying to figure out what the best line of attack is. And this is something we've seen good teams do as we got later, uh, as we're getting later in the tournament. It's more often that our matches start out with a little bit of uh, kind of meditation at the start to try to figure out what the best approach is. Uh, and it's worked out sometimes, but other times it's actually cost teams by because they run out of time. They don't actually have enough time to uh, uh, take advantage of whatever they actually end up doing. And the thing is, Agony is, is in a much better, you can see on their positional uh, position on the field, they're in a much better patient waiting position. Han is sort of spread out, trying to form that screen, but that screen can also lead to your frigates maybe getting a little far out. And one thing to notice is, Agony does have damps. They have no yep. damps applied to the Basilisk. Mm -hmm. So that Basilisk could be sitting there saying, I can rep my screening out for support wing here. I can rep them mm -hmm. there in range, no problem. As soon as one of those support ships takes a misstep, they switch all their damps to the Basilisk, suddenly he's isolated, and they can get a snap kill and then snowball that into a victory. Yep, that's uh, definitely, definitely something they need to think about. Um, there is kind of that E-War battle going on. I, I de you know, the, the damps and tracking disruptors are kind of being positioned and traded, and uh, we'll have to see where those settle in eventually. Um, but yeah, somebody's got to make a move here pretty soon. I, th I think Agony really has to start moving towards them. The other thing is Agony's team is not particularly fast. Uh, moving that Vindicator and Navy Mega across the field is going to take them a little time. So if they wait till too late, they might wind up uh, sorry that they didn't move sooner. I mean, they have a good 50 or 60k to cover to get to the 100 loaded core. Well, the other thing that is, to, is important to note is the uh, Navy Scorpions, the Gnosis, and the Basilisk are sort of forming a mini tinker within the team. Yep. All of their support wing have strong tanks and they can catch reps, but they're not really essentially a part of a tinker as right. most would call it. But uh, what Agony doesn't want to do is engage there, fight, and then sit under tinker fire trying to break it for extended period of time. So what they might be doing here is waiting until the match gets to the end, rush in, take down the support wing, and by then, the DPS of the actual Tinker core, those Navy Scorps, hasn't been really working for that long before the match just ends automatically on time. Yeah, and it's actually interesting to me that Agony hasn't taken any damage so far in this fight. Uh, I feel like Hun wants to be far away. I don't know exactly how much range there is between the ships right now. I guess it's something like 60 or 70k. But Hun has bouncers out. They have cruise missiles from the Scorpions. They should be able to do at least some of their damage from this range, but they haven't been able to get anything done, obviously. I mean, they've, they've hit the Oneros a couple times, but nothing that's really stuck. 
and uh, I feel like that's kind of a bad sign for them. They can obviously get more damage once things get in closer because of the damps not being on the scorpions mm -hmm. and because of dropping heavier damage drones. But um, And they have, like, a ton of hawks and harpies. Which right, right, which really haven't good. done anything yet. But um, it is interesting that Agony's been able to just tank for now. I wonder if Agony is thinking about doing uh, what we saw in the dark side uh, uh, dark versus darkness and despair match where they wait till very late, try to score a kill really quickly before the timer runs out, and... Uh, just use that to like get them in the lead and then win the match without having to fight like a sustained war with the tinker from 100 loaded. I also wonder uh, what kind of tank this Anira is joining. He is armor tank, so that damage is mm -hmm. not uh, significant. Yeah. So we're just going to see. We see okay, some drones being now. traded back and forth here. They're closing in. So what's at the lead of that charge there? Uh, so the agony ship that's in the front is actually an Ishker. Uh, followed up by an Enyo. So Ooh, they're really spread out coming in, though. I don't know if I like that. It's damage coming in on that Ishker. He's tackled. Giznit Malachite. Uh, and he's tackled a Hawk in return. Uh, so we'll have to see. As reps are already on him, so he's not going to break quickly. Uh, unless they have some damps that they... Unless Hun Reloaded has some damps that they can switch to the Oneros. Hawk dropping. Pongi going down for Hun Reloaded. Uh, and the Agni hasn't lost a ship yet. Yeah, they're doing fine. Uh, looks like they're both teams are sort of focused on support for now. The Oneros taking... Uh, the bulk of the like main damage from Hun Reloaded, but they're also trading some damage with that Ishker. Agony, in the meantime, focusing on those Hawks and Harpies, trying to get that support wing off the field. And then Oneros is locked down right now. He's webbed, he's scrammed, he's target painted. He's going to be taking full damage from those Navy Scorps. Uh, he's going to be getting slammed by support wing. It's just if they can kill him fast enough. He's got an uh, AR on him, so it's, he's not going to go down like a brick out of the sky. But uh, we have these Harpies and Hawks holding its shields as reps land on them. So we have to see which right. breaks first. Right. They're going to have a hard time uh, killing those Hawks and Harpies while the Basilisk is free to do whatever it wants. You can see a damp just got applied to the Basilisk. Uh, we'll see. have to see if shield drops. There's actually jammers on some of those Hawks and Harpies. They're probably trying to just get the Harpy wow, Harpy deleted. Down. Nice job. So they're probably really focused on getting the tackle off the Onero so that he can cut free, get his velocity back up, and mitigate more of the damage coming from the Navy Scorpions. Uh, but they need to do that quick. It looks like the Oneros is no longer tackled, so that those jams uh, plus that Harpy kill actually working out. The Oneros yeah, exactly. will be able to pick up speed again. We'll have to see if he's able to stay alive. And But he's not picking up speed. He's still going 235. He has no, like, is he under so much cap pressure right now from the support? Well, keep in mind, 235 against cruise missiles is actually a significant difference from if he was double webbed. Yeah, for exactly instance. true. And he is webbed again now. So we'll see his speed, you know, his speed will go down now to 100 or 75, but another support ship down for uh, Hun Reloaded. They're losing those ships, and in the meantime, they're still struggling to get this Oneros down. Yeah, I think this is actually a decent trade. They've managed to take out two hawks or now three hawks and a harpy and they're going to trade it for an oneros that's still alive in five percent armor uh if they can clear off all this support they can literally just take all their stuff and go home like, wow they can just by leave. the way agony empire is like beating hun reloaded yes that's actually awesome i mean i feel like that didn't really click for me until just <laughs> now agony empire uh always does well in the tournament but i don't think they've ever done this well i don't think they've ever taken out a, a team like hun reloaded so this would be amazing if they can keep this together and they really are the oneros Back up to four or five hundred. Cruise missiles doing even less damage. More of that E war getting focused on the Navy Scorpions, uh, and it looks like they're going to be totally stable. They can finish off more support, or as you say, they can just pull back to their defensive position they were at at the start of the match and not have to worry about anything. Yeah, absolutely. Without a tackle on the Neros, almost nothing on the Hundred Loaded team besides the Hela can apply damage uh, to an Neros. Just you just can't. And even the Hela is going to be having trouble. It's not a Dominix with its tracking bonus. It's just got a damage bonus. So. This is really cool. I feel like Agony looks like a really top-level team. Like, they took this match uh, in a really calculated and careful uh, way, and it worked. Like, they executed really, really well. Um, uh, yeah, the Oneros back to full HP. Now Hunter Loaded's got to think about a target switch or think about, you know, I don't know what course of action could possibly save them at this point. If they can't break the Oneros, they're in really bad shape. I think shape. they've got to think about what bar they're going to go to <laughs> after the after this match because I think they're pretty much out of it. Maybe go to a bar, uh, do some uh, do some alliance tournament at the bar. That's a great way to relax after getting knocked out of the tournament. You but uh, right. and you can see the uh, hundred loaded core is really strong. Agony's uh, two battleships, their flagship Vindicator and their Navy Mega, not able to break that Basilisk, but. It's kind of a risk with Tinker teams, especially when you have the support wing that's kind of exposed mm. and a little weaker than the rest of the core. Like, uh, if you can't kill stuff, you're in trouble. You know, they, they're not able to trade, and even though their they're, uh, center of their setup is really strong, it, it's not strong enough to earn, earn them kills on its own, and that's bad news. But obviously. this is one of the things that happens with Tinker teams a lot. A team goes in, like Agony charges in, 
early in the match at nine minutes. Charges in, takes out the whole support wing, and has to spend nine minutes tanking Tinker damage, and something falls apart. Either there's right. cat pressure or something happens there, and they just lose it against like two battleships and a, a link ship and a Lodgy. But Agony has waited. Agony spent all that time early, yeah, yeah. took the time to position right, come in at the right time, take out that frig wing, get their own Nero safe as the Basilisk starts dropping anyway. So they would have had the DPS to yep. break him. Yeah, but, really uh, awesome. They have the really good like E War support to break the Tinker up with the jams. It's really really cool, and uh, in kind of contrast to the Verge match, they did a really good job handling the support by by mm -hmm. waiting for those guys to dive on logistics and then focusing on taking them out. They were able to protect uh, their own sustain through their Oneros, and uh, this just looks really really strong. Yeah, I think it Agony was almost like a pretty a, awesome here. a fake out initiate from Agony. Like yeah. they charged in, yeah. and then literally just turned around as soon as they yep, counter charged. Absolutely. Uh, with the time up, that's going to be the match. Han reloaded, dropping out of the tournament. Agony Empire advancing on. Awesome. We're going to throw it back to CSB Soundwave and the guy in the studios. Guys in the studio. <laughs>